Gentlemen, this is William Azzi reporting from Town Centre Stadium in Coquitlam for the BC Soccer Association Province Cup Final between North Shore Pegasus in their white jerseys and white shorts and socks against Powell River Villa wearing the red tops with black shorts and black socks. With me I have Mr. Carmen Morelli to assist me with the color commentary. This promises to be quite an exciting game, Carmen. 
Yes, it does, Bill. We have uh, quite a boisterous crowd from Powell River. They brought their fans, and they're really up for this one. Should be an exciting contest on a beautiful day. Powell River has had three very close matches, close victories, to enable them to reach today's final. They defeated Vancouver, Croatia on penalty kicks in the first round, then disposed of Club Ireland also on penalty kicks in the second round. Both of those matches were held in Powell River, whereas last week Powell River upset Westside Reno in overtime in a, an extremely exciting game witnessed by three, four hundred fans, most of them from Powell River. All those fans are back today and it promises to be an exciting contest. Pegasus is missing several of their top-notch players. Uh, all have, uh, all six of them I believe, five or six of them have gone to the Vancouver 86ers in the semi-professional league and as a result they cannot play in today's final. However, even though with their roster severely depleted, Powell River still fields a very strong lineup and must be considered the favorites of today's match. Bill, uh, just, uh, just to give you a, a little bit of the strategy here, uh, Pegasus will line up with a 3-5-2. That means uh, three fullbacks, five midfielders, and two forwards. And uh, the fellow to watch for for Pegasus is Giuliano Oliviero, an excellent striker. He plays at midfield, but he'll be one to watch out for. For Paul River, they'll be playing a 4-4-2, and uh, the two players they should be watching for will be Ian Carroll, Anthony Leach, and uh, Ross Simpson, who scored uh, a couple of goals last week. This proves to be a very exciting game, and uh, I would bet on, uh, I would say that the fitness level is going to tell the difference here who's going to win this contest. Well, Powell River has uh, proven that their fitness is uh, up to snuff. They went into overtime three times in three successive games, uh, whereas Pegasus uh, was not uh, forced to do that. However, all of Pegasus' victories were also very narrow. Uh, last week, they defeated uh, West Van Trollers 1-0 on a goal by center back veteran Steve Reed. Uh, the week before, they defeated the defending BC champions Metro Ford Wolves by a 4-3 score. Again, Steve Reed scoring the winner very, very late in the contest. So both teams have had uh, a pretty tough road to these finals. We're about ready to start. The referee for the contest is uh, Robert Sattel, one of uh, Canada's finest. He's um, on the FIFA list. Just a, a note of change here, Bill. Last week, uh, Dave Fiorvento for Pegasus was playing at uh, right fullback, and he's going up front as a striker today. So this uh, is going to be very interesting to see what he can do up there against uh, this uh, tough side from Powell River. So keep an eye on number 20, Dave Fiorvento. The starting lineups are as follows. For uh, Powell River, wearing red and shooting from right to left, Cam Clymer is the goalkeeper. The back four are... William Cook, number 11, Doug McLean, number 4, Bob Bogoslowski, number 19, and Mark McDonald, McDougall, number 5. In the midfield, we have uh, Tony Leach, number 7, Brett Pence, number 6, Cam Miller, number 8, and Derek Lamont, number 17. Up front, we have Ian Carroll, number 10, and Ross Simpson, number 15. ball by Carroll looking for Simpson. Simpson scored both goals last week for his team and came very, very close on that occasion to scoring in the very first minute of the match, receiving a fine pass from his uh, partner up front, Ian Carroll. Uh, Brad Higgs came out and uh, was able to deflect that ball for what appeared to be a corner kick, but I guess that uh, Simpson touched the ball last and it goes off for a goal kick. Uh, it appears that Brad Higgs has uh, got a little knock there. He's limping a bit. But we'll see if uh, that results to anything later on as the game progresses. 
The starting lineup now for Pegasus, number one in goal, Brad Higgs. The back three, Danny Mastromonaco, number two, Robin Regnier, number 15. Steve Reed, number five, and just as we were saying that, Steve Reed attempted to clear the ball and it went off a Powell River midfielder, number 17, Derek Lamont, just high of the target. That was very dangerous, very dangerous pass. Another good opportunity for Powell River, who seems to be taking the play to Pegasus early on. Resuming the lineup for Pegasus in the midfield, we have number 16, Frank Lore. Number six, Eddie Cannon. Number 10, Tibor Budai. Number nine, Julian Oliviero. And number 14, Jeff Clark. Whereas up front we have number 20, Dave Fiorvento. And number 17, Randy Cellarini. We have a, an injury on the field here, Bill with, uh, I believe it's number 17 for the Paul River team, and that is uh, Derek Lamont. He's, uh, he looks to be okay, just a little shaken up. He might be receiving treatment, I'm not sure. Derek Lamont is the chap that had that um, goal scoring chance on Steve Reed's rather casual clearance. He uh, seems to be coming off the field. Looks like he'll go back in. We're not sure. Oliviero sends Fiorvento. Fiorvento back heels to Celebrini. A, spot, a, a good save by Cam Clymer, who couldn't hold the ball. It was finally put into touch. Good counterattack by Pegasus with Fiorvento, Oliviero, and Celebrini all in on the action. That was a bit dangerous there. It didn't seem like Paul River really knew what they wanted to do with uh, clearing that ball, and they were very fortunate that it wasn't uh, in the back of the net. Corner kick by Budai, cleared away. Steve Reed puts it back into play. There are two or three Pegasus attackers offside. Reed always goes up on these corner kicks. That's how he scored uh, two winning goals in the semifinal and earlier in the quarterfinals. Doug McDougall cleared into touch by Eddie Cannon. Cannon fouls number eight, Cam Miller. Free kick for Powell River. McDougall with a long ball upfield. It could be dangerous. Good header, the far right by Ross Simpson, and goal kick for Pegasus. I think Pegasus is going to have to watch these long kicks from uh, free kicks from Paul River, and uh, they can get up quite high. So we'll see as it progresses uh, how they deal with that. McDougal beats Clark to the ball. McDougal again, battling with Clark. Cleaned up by Lore. Cannon over to Budai. Long ball downfield, easily collected by Clymer. Over to Cook. These fans are really getting into this. It's nice to see a good crowd supporting their uh, local side. 86ers fans should take note. These people, <laughs> about 300 of them, are making way more noise than four or 5,000 at Swan Guard or BC Place. Free kick for Powell River. Carroll 
Gives it away to Fiorvento, to Budai. Looking for Celebrini, cleared by Cook. Back to Budai. Tries to find Fiorvento. Finally cleared away. Mastro Monaco. To Reed. Sorry, Wegner. To Reed. To Budai. Keeps it in play. Upfield for Fiorvento. The ball is out of play. Throw in for Powell River. Well, it's going to be interesting here that um, as Pegasus was trying to come in on the right side, but nothing happened there, so they had to turn around and use their left flank. Nothing really developed. However, uh, Powell River has the ball in, and it's going to be out of touch for a goal kick for Brad Higgs. But uh, it's going to be quite a test. There are two even sides here, and it's uh, anybody's game. A little tentative on Pegasus' side right at the moment. Well, no the, real uh, domination exhibited by either team yet, although Powell River has had the better of the chances thus far. There's the goal kick by Brad Higgs. Bat it down. It's at Ian Carroll. And here comes Rob Ree. <laughs> Oliviero with a good flick, looking for Clark. Cut off by Clymer. Pegasus was complaining that uh, there was a pass back there, but it was totally un unintentional. And referee Sattel did well to disregard their complaints. Master Monaco wins the header. Goes into touch, throw in for Budai. They have to move for him, Bill. I mean, he's got no one to throw to. There's no one moving off the ball for uh, Budai. And as you can see, it's a wasted effort. We're going to try it again here. Now, Paul River, let's see if anybody moves for him. Throwing goes back to goalkeeper Clymer. Hunt downfield. Simpson and Master Monaco both missed the ball. Eddie Cannon gives it to Oliviero. Beaten to the ball by Carroll. Looking for Simpson. He's fouled offside by linesman Reed. A far sided linesman had his flag up a little late, but nevertheless, <coughs> the offside call is made. Free kick for Pegasus. They were pretty lucky to get out of that one. If uh, he wasn't offside, it could have been even maybe a penalty kick, but uh, they, they were lucky. Let's see what they can do now. Laurie oh, gives it pass. away, but Lamont, the player who was shaken up earlier, can't control the ball, it goes into touch, throw in for Clark. Over to Cook from Boguslawski. Cook, the right fullback, carries upfield, undisturbed, crosses the halfway line, sends a long ball nice over to Carroll, good control, yeah. good turn. Goal. A, a brilliant effort goal. by Ian Carroll. Ian Carroll. What a rocket. That was incredible. Tenth minute mark.
penalty sent. A marvelous ball into the box, controlled flawlessly by number 10, Ian Carroll with his chest. Quick turn and a shot to the far post that had Brad Higgs gasping for air. 1-0, the 10th minute mark of the first half. It'll be interesting to see now how Pegasus Follow reacts here. First goal scored on the 10th minute mark by number 10, Ian Carroll. Score is now Paul Riverville 1, North Shore Pegasus 0. It'll be interesting to see at the 10 minute mark. Last week, Pegasus got the first goal, and as a result of that, they just hang, hung back and uh, waited for uh, the other team to take it to them. But they can't do that this week, and now they're going to have to take charge and bring the ball down to uh, Paul River. This is going to be interesting now. This is a totally different script from last week. Paul River last week had to come from behind, struggled for most of the game, finally tied it up in the, la in the dying moments of regulation time before winning it in overtime. Uh, this week, they take the early lead, and Pegasus, who had taken the early lead last week, is now forced to uh, come from behind. Very interesting scenario. Let's see what develops. Well, it looks like Paul River is very composed on the ball right now. They just seem to have full charge. McDougal plays a 1-2 with number 8, Miller. Stripped of the ball by Master Monaco. Over to Celebrini. Knocked into touch by number four, Doug McLean. Throw in for Pegasus. Number 16, Frank Lore. Good, strong tackle by Bogoslowski. Regnier back to Higgs. It seems to have awakened Pegasus up a bit. It looks like they're trying to uh, move the ball around a little more. And uh, finally, someone's moving off the ball to, for the throw in. This is Miller. Over Simpson. Knocked into touch by Master Monaco. Throw in for Powell River to be taken by number 17, Lamont. Laurie, long clearance upfield, looking for Fiorvento. Cut off, Bogoslowski, over to Cook. Cook, the architect of the first goal. Tries to get by Oliviero, cut off by Oliviero, who sends Fiorvento, who is called offside by linesman John Nielsen. That was a questionable call there. It's 50-50 uh, on that one, but, uh, well, the referees always win in, this, in these battles. Free kick, nevertheless, for Doug McLean. Here's the free kick, and it's going to... And a header by McDougal, I believe. And now Brad Higgs has it, and he punts it up the field. Ball is going back. It's cleared away by Pegasus. And now Ian Carroll has it. Oh, he's run right over. And the referee makes no doubt about that. It's a free kick for Paul River again, and this is going to be dangerous once more. They're about 35 yards out, and this could be a, a very dangerous play here. Let's see how they set themselves up. They'll probably be looking for Ian Carroll and number eight. Brad Hicks Fisted it away by Hicks. Carroll again. This time he couldn't quite get his foot on it and shoots well wide. Hicks did well to come out to punch that clear on a very dangerous, as you say, Carmen, free kick from Powell River. Well, it's, uh, it's going to be tough for uh, Pegasus. They're just laying back on their heels. They don't seem to have the jump or the spark that they've, they've had in the other previous games. 
And uh, I don't know, it's just, uh, just a totally different team. Well, this Powell River team is definitely inspired. I think the crowd uh, does uh, them nothing but good. It motivates them. Incredible support shown these Powell River boys. Lore, Lore still to Oliviero, back to Reed. Oh, Scissors oh, kick. Oh. Tried by number 17, Randy Celebrini. Good effort. The ball, however, is well wide of the net. And goal kick for number four, Doug McLean for Powell River. But that was much better. At least they're starting to knock the ball around. And uh, they found uh, Celebrini up in the middle. And he did a hitch kick. And uh, unfortunately, he couldn't hit the net with it. But it's much better for uh, Pegasus. Lore. Oliviero looking for Fiorvento. Fiorvento. Good save by Kyan Clymer on a fine ball by Oliviero to Fiorvento. Fiorvento was an all alone. Clymer did ever so well to stymie that opportunity. He certainly did. Came off his line very well, and there was no question he was going to get that ball. And he beat Dave Fiorvento to it. A good effort by Pegasus, however, and they're starting to take Celebrini. Shot is easily saved by Clymer. That's looking a lot better for Pegasus. Brad Higgs gets it now, and he's going to be looking for someone up front. He should be hitting the flanks, that's better. <coughs> Oliviero beats one man, looks for Fiorvento, cut off by number four, McLean, and into touch. It looks as if Paul River is back on its heels a little bit now, with uh, Pegasus uh, taking over the, uh, the reins of this game. You're right, Bill, and it's going to be interesting now to see how Pegasus reacts. If they... Lore to Oliviero. Oliviero again. Picked up by number four, McLean. Long ball upfield into touch. Referee Sattel is having uh, a few problems here. First, he uh, intercepted a couple of uh, Paul River passes earlier on, and now all of a sudden he went down. Uh, looked to me as if uh, there was nobody near him. Maybe he uh, tripped over uh, the center line. It's interesting here that uh, as Pegasus moves up the field, the, Pe uh, the uh, Paul River team seems to plug up the middle, which makes it very difficult for penetrating passes in the middle. So look for some play out on the flanks more by uh, the Pegasus team. Carroll. Reed. Cook. Good cross into the box. Well tapped up very well by Brad Higgs. Well, Brad Higgs is very experienced and uh, he's not going to let those ones get by him. Some people would say old. <laughs> he could be, keep playing forever the way he's playing. Dino Zoff was uh, 41 in the 1982 World Cup when Italy won. That's right. I think Brad Higgs is very close to that. <laughs> he made four World Cup appearances, too. Not Higgs. Uh, not Higgs, no. Oliviero, Oliviero still tries to get around. Another man unsuccessfully cleared away by McDougal. Here it comes Pence. Pence tries a long shot. No problem. Again, Higgs looking very sharp. Made that look rather easy, actually. They'll let him shoot from out there anytime. Well, the game's very lively. It's starting to pick up. Both teams are going at each other. It's just turned out into a wonderful game. 
Powell Rivers seems to, have, to be having difficulty containing number nine, uh, Juliano Oliveira. Uh, Laurie tries a long shot. Easy pickings, really, for Cam Climber. The shot was uh, well placed, but it was, uh, wasn't hard enough. They need to do that, however, just to let them know that they can shoot from all over the place, just like Paul River can. Mastromana close, seems to be winning everything in the air. Here's Budai on the far left. Long ball for Fiorvento. Again, a very close offside call. Fiorvento is offside, according to John Nielsen. I think he was on that one. There was no question on that one there. He had a step on his defender. Well, we'll see what happens now. Cook with the free kick. Again, Mastromonaco wins it easily in the air. Very dominant center back, Danny Mastromonaco. Oh, nice ball. This could be dangerous. Carroll over to Simpson. Simpson in the box. Ooh, just over the top. Higgs had it well covered, but... Um, Nevertheless, it was still dangerous. They have to watch those runs down the flank and those corners, or the crosses coming in. Paul Rivers very dangerous in the middle. Seems to be a problem with the netting. Referee Rob, Robert Sattel is, and, and, and goalkeeper Brad Higgs are trying to uh, adjust it after one of the Powell River forwards. Was caught this up in the netting. <laughs> this is great. They're singing away. They're having a great old time. And I noticed, Bill, that they've uh, plunked themselves right in the beer garden, too. Why not? Can you imagine the ferry rides home if Powell River <laughs> should win this? I think I'd like to be on that ferry, yes. or those two ferries. It's two ferry rides, isn't it? That's right. It's a long haul back home. Looks like the repair work at the back of the net is taking longer than anticipated. I didn't know referees had to take a course in sewing either. He did a good job though, didn't he? Well, we're not sure of that. We can't see from this far, but I think one of the uh, town center workers has now taken over the responsibility. And here, play resumes with a free kick from Higgs to Lore, back to Regnier, over to the far left to Budai. Long ball upfield for Celebrini, cut off quite easily by Boguslowski. Cook to Leach, back to Cook. Well, the play has been uh, just a little sloppy there, but no one is really penetrating in each other. But uh, we'll see what happens now. It's a long throw in by Pegasus, taken by Fiorvento. Celebrini is going in. Rivers defending very well so far. Free kick for Paul River. Lamont on the ball. <laughs> Lamont had that good early scoring chance and then he uh, got a knock. He was injured. Leaves the ball for McLean. <clears throat> Long ball upfield for McLean. It's a lovely ball. By McLean. Very dangerous ball. And uh, just went off the foot of the striker coming in. But uh, if they keep doing that more often, I, uh, I think they're going to put a few more behind that goal. Regnier over to Budai. Back to Regnier. Over to Lore. Clark. 1-2 with Laurie, back to Clark. This is nice soccer that Pegasus is exhibiting. Clark looking That's for Fiorvento. Ball. Excellent ball with the outside of the foot. Fiorvento on the cross. 
eludes Clymer. Got a corner Celebrini kick wins a corner kick. Good cross by Fervento, swung away from the goalkeeper. Now we gotta watch Rob Breed coming up here, or um, uh, Steve Breed coming up. He's number five, and they're gonna try to put it on his head, and he's gonna try to hit it in the net. Yeah, as I've said, uh, he uh, scored the uh, two crucial goals in the last two games. Veteran Steve Reed, number five. Corner kick, and it's out of play. Good job by Regnier to try to keep it in play, but it had swung into touch. Fiorvento's cross yeah, it didn't was off a, target. It was off target because I think they were trying to do a knock on, a flick on over the head, and to try to hit Reed at the back, but it didn't quite work. But at least they're trying something new, and uh, who knows, they may try that one again later on. We reached the uh, 25th minute mark of the first half. This is Oliviero. Oh, beautiful. Looking for Fiorvento, and once again, Fiorvento is inches offside. Very close. And once again, it was uh, Oliviero who uh, sent Fiorvento. Uh, it looks to me as if Oliviero is the uh, architect of uh, virtually every Pegasus attack from his uh, central midfield position. He's a very skilled player. He knows where the players are, and he's going to distribute the ball to both sides whenever he can. battling in the middle of the park. McDougal over to McLean, gives it away to Clark, to Lore, to Oliviero, turns, Fiorvento, beats one man, tries to beat another, finally cleared away by McLean. No question about it, Pegasus is now taking charge of the game. Long ball into See, touch, throw in for Paul River. Paul River is uh, playing a very smart game here. As soon as uh, Pegasus takes the ball out, they move out very quickly and it forces Pegasus on the offside. So they're very well disciplined and well coached in uh, getting themselves out of the, uh, their 18 yard line. Some pretty scrambly play here. Brad Higgs rolls it over to Renier. Over to Tibor. Fiorvento has it now. It's a one, two, this could be. Budai in the middle, easily cut off by Boguslawski. One again by Celebrini. And there was absolutely no Pegasus striker in position to receive that reasonably good cross by Celebrini. Well, they're just uh, being, there's too many reds when uh, they're bringing the counter attack up. And there's six reds to only two attackers of Pegasus. And they're certainly not going to win any games that way. They're going to have to, the midfielders have to push up a little more to get some penetration. They're not willing to risk much yet. Laurie. Does well to get out of that jam. However, his pass is gobbled up by Miller. And finally cleared by Master Monaco, who in the process is fouled by uh, Ross Simpson, the hero of last week's game. Free kick for Pegasus. That was a high foot, and that's why the referee blew it. Dangerous play. This is Regnier to Budai. Stopped by Leach, who in turn is stopped by Regnier. McDougal, over to Miller, to Pence, to Cook, cleared into touch by Master Monaco. Well, Pegasus is still trying. They're trying to penetrate the middle, but it's uh, being very difficult. Well, they will may have to make a switch here and put another uh, attacker up there, or an attacking midfielder, to open it up a bit more. So far, it hasn't worked. We'll see what happens. This is Cook again. Takes the ball into touch. Throw in for Pegasus. Now, 
let's see if Texas moves for the ball. Yes, they do. Oh, that's a bad giveaway by Clark. This is McDougal. Easily cleared by Regnier. Right to Lamont. Long shot. From at least 30 meters. And it goes well high of Brad Higgs' goal. The score at this moment, after 30 minutes of play in the first half, is still 1-0 for Powell River. Yes, that was a, a shot, and uh, Brad Higgs will let him have those any time. But uh, it was a good effort by Lamont, and, uh, but try to keep it low next time. Seemed to raise his head up, and he was looking for the ball, and it went way over the net. Regnier to Budai. Looking for Celebrini. Can't beat Cook. Back to Mastro Monaco. Over to Regnier. Looking for Reed. Over to Lore. Reed. Lore. Finally intercepted by Miller. Back to Reed, however. McDougal, Fiorvento, good battling here. Long ball by Cannon. Celebrini leaves it for Budai, whose shot is wide of the net. Well, it was a good effort. I mean, uh, they have to keep trying those. But uh, they have to maybe uh, bring the ball down a bit quicker and uh, take a good shot on goal. To try and hit him like that on the fly, it's uh, very difficult. But at least they're trying, and they're trying to switch uh, the, the ball back and forth from side to side. Here we go. We're down the flank here. Let's see what they can do. It's a good effort. Oh, now this could be dangerous. We've got a two-on-one here. Let's this see what he Simpson. can do with him. Simpson oh. tries to chip Brad Higgs. Well cut off by Higgs. He had Carroll with him. However, Carroll was covered. And I think Simpson did well to try the chip there. He just couldn't get it high enough over Higgs' head. It's a good effort. It was a two-on-one, but he should have proceeded a lot quicker. Uh, he took his time, and by that time, Pegasus were back. And that uh, wasn't much of a threat after that. Excellent counter-attack, however, by Powell River. Throw in for Pegasus. See, this is what Pegasus does so well, is their transition game from the fence to the front. Long cross, way off the park by Laurie, the right-sided midfielder. Chance starts again for the Powell River fan. Uh, next time you should try for the penalty spot and uh, get someone running in on it for a head. Oliviero to Fiorvento. Fouled by Bogoslowski. Quickly taken, Fiorvento over to Celebrini. Cleared into touch by number four, Doug McLean. Throw in for Pegasus to be taken by Lore. Well, that was a bit better. It looks like Pegasus are, have a little more urgency on the ball now. Reed. Wild clearance by number six, Brett Pence. Lore again. Oliviero, Oliviero, still Oliviero. He doesn't give up. Be three men there. Finally stopped by a fourth. Regnier clears it up in the sky. Carroll battling with Cannon. Clark wins that header. Back to Clark. Over to Budai. Back to Jeff Clark. 
Long ball straight into the arms of goalkeeper Kleiman. See, well, Jeff should uh, try to hit the opposite side of the flank on the right side, not try to hit the uh, the goalkeeper in that uh, situation. There were two Pegasus guys waiting for the ball there. Again, Master Monaco has no difficulty winning that header. Oliviero on the ball, as he has been for most of the day. Oliviero Excellent. tries a shot. Oh, Brilliant yeah. effort by what Giuliano Oliviero, who has definitely been the best player on Pegasus' side. And that came in the 35th minute mark. Giuliano Oliviero on a solo effort. The two defenders, and with his left foot, deposited the ball to the left of goalkeeper Cam Clymer. That was just a brilliant effort. He didn't give up. He just kept plugging away with the ball. He beat two defenders and then just hit a housing shot from the 18-yard line and put it in the back of the net. What a brilliant effort by Giuliano. Pegasus first goal scored by number nine, Giuliano Oliviero. At the 35th minute mark, the score, Pegasus one, Paul River one. Thirty-five. Well, this is going to be very interesting now, now that we're even at one apiece. take this and, and Steve Reed should be up there now trying to take the uh, get ahead on this ball but they'll go for Celebrini here looking for Celebrini scrambled away by number 11 Willie Cook <coughs> throw in for Pegasus well Rick uh, Celebrini has a, a nice header as well but uh, it would have been nice to have the two of them back there Cannon, cut off by McDougal. That ball was look was destined for Frank Laurie, who's on the ball now and wins a corner kick. Ball cut off by McDougal. That ball was very, very dangerous had it reached its destination, which was Frank Laurie on the far right. Now we'll see uh, Steve Reed up here. That goal came at the 35th minute mark. We've now played roughly 40 minutes of the first half. The score is still 1-1 with Pegasus uh, coming back after that early Powell River goal. In swinger by Budai, scrambled yeah. away, still oh. scrambled away, Incredible. right into the hands of Clymer. That was a brilliant save by the defender who's still down on, on, the, on the field there. <coughs> I can't see his number. The ball is thrown off. It's number four, uh, Doug McLean. But he made no, a I'm sorry, it isn't number four. It's number 19, Bogoslowski. He just made a brilliant effort there, and he got it right in the tummy, and I think the wind is knocked out of him. So the trainer comes out, and time is suspended for a while. Here's a good opportunity now for both teams to get some water. It's very hot out there, and to get these uh, players well hydrated. <coughs> so that uh, they'll have enough energy to carry them through. Well, it looks like he's uh, going to be all right. And it looks like play will resume in, uh, immediately. Goal kick for Powell River. Powell River fans were not quieted by that goal. They're still chanting. <laughs> they'll take more than a goal to be. quiet these fans. Free kick given to Pegasus. Much to the displeasure of the Powell River fans. Fervento can't control the ball. Miller. Over to Lamont, to McDougal. Looking for Carroll. Carroll gets there ahead of Redmere. Steve Reed clean 
things up. I'm really impressed with Ian Carroll. He's going for every ball here. He's just uh, going at it full tilt, and he got a good knock there. But he's up, and uh, he's stretching a bit, and uh, he's going to be okay. Well, there's no question in my mind that Carroll is the top player for the Spal River team, whereas Oliviero is doing just about everything for Pegasus. Clark. Clark. Again, straight into the arms of Clymer. That was a good effort by Jeff Clark. If he could have gotten that ball just a little higher, we had uh, two Pegasus there. Oliviero was there, and so was uh, Dave Fiorbento. Uh, we've got about three minutes left in the first half. So yeah, there's three minutes to go, but then there's injury time as well. There must be about, I would say, at least three more minutes after that of injury time, considering the fact that it took a while to get the net fixed, and uh, it was an injury. Two injuries, actually, to Paul River players. McDougal, challenged by Cannon, over to Budai. That was a good run, but there really was no danger because the Pegasus team defends very well. They're very quick, and there was four of them back to only two red shirts. So if they're going to pull that. They have to bring more players up to make any danger out of that situation. <laughs> Oliveira almost steals that ball. Lamont clears it upfield. To Regnier, over to Reed. Oliviero flicks it on for Fiorvento. Fiorvento in the box, tries to beat his man. Long ball to the far post, cleared off the line by Hugh, uh, by uh, Willie Cook, almost into his own net. That was it could easily dangerous. have been, very easily have been an own goal. And a really good ball by. Fiorvento, who was looking for the cross to the far post. You notice now, uh, Bill, they're bringing Renier up as well, who's going to the short post, and Reed. They the got all the big post. men up. They got uh, Master Monaco up there too, as well as Reed. Not a very good no, ball, actually, no, no, by Tibo no, Budai. It puts uh, Pegasus in a bit of a hole here, because all the defenders are upfield. This is Simpson making a good run. I will push the ball too far ahead of himself, and Cannon, who had draw back in the defensive position, finally sweeps it away. Very mediocre ball by Budai, put his team in a, in a very unfavorable position. If Paul River were a little quicker, that could have been very dangerous. Long throw for Miller. Again, Oliveros there. Cook tries the shot from well out, deflected into touch. Another long throw from Lamont over to Cook. Ragnar clears it into touch. This is where Paul River has to take charge here. They have, uh, they have them pinned in at their own end. And now they have to have these red shirts moving off the ball so that they can get control of it. <coughs> This might be a long throw in. Another long throw from number 17, Lamont, into That's the a box. Attempted well flip on. That was just missed there. But uh, had he put his uh, head on that, it could have been very dangerous. Now it's a throw in for Pegasus. Miller. Oh, good job by Carroll. Oh, this is Carroll here on the header. Excellent job by Tony Leach, number seven. 
Goodbye, his man crossed a wonderful ball into the box. Unfortunately, it was a tiny little bit too high for Ian Carroll, whose header went wide. <laughs> well, that good was opportunity, a good play. almost at the stroke of half time. It's a good effort by Tony Leach. And uh, if he had found uh, Ian Carroll just a little better, a little lower, it would have been, uh, could have been very dangerous. This well, let's is see what Laurie. Pegasus uh, counterattacks. Celebrini. <laughs> Celebrini keeps it in play, still in play. Oliveira's offside. <laughs> Good effort by Randy Celebrini to keep that ball in play. Free kick now for Powell River. We've played two minutes of injury time. Budai to Celebrini. No problems for Cam Clymer, the Powell River goalkeeper. Well, I'm sure this heat has taken its toll on these players. They've gone at it uh, pretty hard this first half. And uh, I'm sure they're looking for a well-deserved rest. Free kick against Ian Carroll for a dangerous play. Powell River fans are very dissatisfied with that call thinking that it was uh, Steve Reed who had ducked into the... <laughs> we won't tell you what they're saying. I'm sure that our fans can hear. with the score 1-1 at the end of 45 very exciting minutes of action Powell River taking the lead in the 10th minute mark on a great goal by Ian Carroll and, uh, and Pegasus tying it up in the 35th minute mark on an equally fine effort by Juliano Oliveira well Bill this was an exciting first half we couldn't have asked for anything better half. it's 1-1 uh, one, one at halftime both Pegasus teams are going at it very hard and now we'll have to wait and see how both teams react to the uh, instructions by their coaches and how they come. And uh, we're getting ready here to start the second half with the score Pegasus 1, Powell River 1. The first half displayed some very fine soccer, two great goals, the first one by Powell Rivers' Ian Carroll, and the tying goal late in the half by number nine for Pegasus' Juliano Oliveira. Pegasus is now shooting from right to left, wearing their all-white uniforms, whereas Powell River in red and black will attack the goal to the right and will also kick off the second half of play. Referee Robert Sattel is ready. Both teams seem to be ready to resume play, and the second half has just begun. Well, let's see what happens now, Bill, because uh, it's going to be interesting. They're both even, and now uh, the best team's going to take this game. Simpson gets the ball back from Carroll. Good tackle by Redmere, who is then fouled by Simpson. Free kick for Pegasus. Mr. Sotel wants a word with um, Ross Simpson. In fact, he gives him the yellow card for that challenge from behind on Rob Regnier. Simpson had lost the ball to Regnier in an attempt to win it back, tripped Regnier, who was uh, running away from him. And that brings a yellow card caution from referee Sotel. Free kick for Regnier. Flicked on by Celebrini. Back to Celebrini. Won by Leach. Leach is fouled by Celebrini. Free kick for Powell River. From McLean over to McDougal. Ball gets away from McDougal. However, he catches it in time before it goes off the park. This is Lorre. 
for Pegasus. Back to Mastro Monaco. Upfield for Celebrini. Cleared by Bogoslowski. Over to Miller. To Willie Cook. Cook. Over to Leach. Leach gets the ball in the box. Cleared at the last moment by Cannon. Cleaned up by Oliviero. Back to Miller, whose shot is high and wide. Well, it's, uh, it's nice to see that uh, Paul River's going to take their shots. <coughs> he still has to keep his head down, technically. He's looking at the back of the net. But uh, he's got to get it lower. But it's a good attempt. It's also encouraging to see the referee let these guys play. He could have called, uh, blown it down there, but he didn't. He elected it to play, and uh, we got a good attempt on it. Brings the ball up on the left flank. With a Carroll. Back to McDougal. Back to the keeper. Climber. Once again to McDougal. However, that ball goes out of play. Throw in for Pegasus. Rather sloppy defending there by, by the Powell River team. It could be costly. Cannon. Lore, uh, Celebrini, Celebrini tries, tries a pass to Fiorvento. It's neatly cut off by goalkeeper Clymer. Well, I would say that uh, if he's going to try that, he's got to go a little higher or he's got to try and skip it on the ground so that it makes it difficult for the goalie to scoop it up. This is Leach. From behind by Budai. Mr. Sotel wants to have a word with Budai for that late tackle. He gave a yellow card for exactly the same thing earlier. And being consistent, gives one to Tibor Budai at the third minute mark of the second half. Yellow card to Budai. Two yellow cards in this half already. Cook on the free kick. Scrambled away by Lore into touch. I think the referee wanted to uh, kind of even things up there. Gave that yellow card early. And now they're all even in every count. Cards and the score. Well, I think the crowd called that yellow card. Um, <laughs> I don't think the Budai's challenge was quite as... No. Severe as the previous one. However, uh, the crowd would have gone nuts if um, Sotel had not uh, punished Budai in the same way that he had punished the Powell River player earlier. Uh, a long throw in by number 17, Lamont, cleared away by, pa by Pegasus. Celebrini to Oliviero. Back to Celebrini. Three on two. Good defending by Tony Luke. Budai wins the challenge. Looks for Fervento on the far left. Fervento is all alone over here on this flank. Has lots of time. Sends the ball in the middle. It's just a little bit too high for Randy Celebrini. Still in play. And finally goes out of bounds for a goal kick. Well, it's uh, sloppy but dangerous, I guess I would say it. And uh, Pegasus got a good counter attack there. And uh, they just about made Paul River pay for it. Chavento was left all alone on the left flank. His uh, right footed uh, cross was just a little bit too high for the tall Randy Celebrini. And after that, it was a scramble. chant starts again. There must be at least 400 Powell River fans here. That's a lovely Great ball from number six, Brett Pence, looking for Tony Leach, who is fouled in the process, and referee Sotel catches the infraction and awards Powell River a free kick. It's great uh, one-two uh, touch there by the Paul 
River team. Cook, long ball upfield into the box. Partially cleared by Lore and finally sent into touch by Budai. That's a lovely ball, but there was nobody there to pick that up. There's some uncertainty on the part of the Pegasus defense, too. Powell River forwards, however, did not take advantage of the situation. Long throw again by Derek Lamont, who takes all the throw-ins from this area from either side of the park. Long and low, into the box, cleared away by Cannon to Oliviero. Oliviero can't get by Leach. Leach looking for Carroll, cleared away by Regnier. Throw in for Miller. Over to Leach. Back to Pence. In the box. Great save by Brad Higgs on a wonderful shot by Ross Simpson. What lovely play there. Pence again. Phenomenal save by Brad Higgs. A beautiful play by the, uh, the winger down there, by Pence, who put it back beautifully. And it's a great shot by, the, uh, by Simpson. And a brilliant save by Higgs, who just had the timing down pass and put it away. He sure saved their bacon on that one. Corner kick. Cleared away. Attempted long shot. Cleared by Regnier. And again by Reed to Regnier to Lore. Long ball upfield, but it's out of touch. Into touch for a throw in. Seems like Paul River is uh, attacking a little more frequently at the beginning of this half. Uh, just like they did at the beginning of the first half. So we'll see how Pegasus counters. That came at about the seventh minute mark. That excellent effort by Ross Simpson on a wonderful cross by Brett Pence from the right. These fans are having a great time here. The more beer they drink, the better the time they're having, too. Goal kick for Pegasus. Very, very exciting atmosphere. Electrifying atmosphere. And it's good soccer is being played, too. It's nice to see. After all, it's the Province Cup. The best team in the province walks away with this one. The winner of this match goes to the Nationals on Thanksgiving weekend in October. I believe this year they're held in Winnipeg, Manitoba. The women's winner, which was uh, Victoria Gorge and an upset over Surrey Marlins, will also be there for the women Nationals. Either one of these two teams can uh, make BC proud in the Canadian Championships in October. They're both very good teams. No foul call there on Simpson. According to referee Sotel, this is uh, Redmere. Looks for Budai, but... Uh, there's no chance for Tibor Budai to reach that ball. It's way too far ahead of him. And here comes, <coughs> here comes Willie Cook. Oh, it's kind of right a wasted flank. effort there. Cook to Leach. Leach to Miller. Back to Carroll. Looks for Miller. Can't find him. Cleared away finally by Redmere. A little pushing and kicking going on between Redmere and Cam Miller. Undetected by referee Sotel. Throw in by Leach over to Miller. Beaten to the ball by Giuliano Oliviero. Carroll, these two are the two most dangerous players, no question about it. 
on Powell Riverside. Uh, this is uh, Cam Miller. Does, oh, this is Pence. Pence over to Simpson. Simpson over to McDougal. McDougal tries a long shot is deflected for a corner. Pence and Miller look a bit alike from this vantage point, and we often get them mixed up. Pence is number six, Miller is number eight. The numbers are also similar. Let's see what uh, Paul River can do here on this corner kick. Looks like McDougal, Duncan McDougal taking the corner kick. He has Leach standing with him. These two are the respectively the manager and the coach of this fine team. Watch for Pence coming in for the long ball to try and head it in. In swinger, cleared away by Ragnier, Van Oliviero, and again Ragnier looking for Fiorvento, cleared finally by Doug McLean, over to Carroll. Can he keep it in? No, no, it's just out of bounds. Throw in for Pegasus. Some complaints from the Powell River team about that call. However, linesman Mark Reed had uh, the best view of it, and he considered the ball to be out of bounds. Throw in for Pegasus. No one's moving off the ball here to give him a target. See, see what happened there? Is no one was moving, and uh, all Oliviero could do was just put it out. And now uh, Paul River gets the throw in. Definite resemblance between the way this half started and the way the first half started, with Paul River on the attack, creating the best chances, and uh, Pegasus uh, defending. The difference, of course, is that by now in the first half, Paul River had scored their go-ahead goal. Leach and Reed get into a bit of a scuffle. Referee Sattel calls the foul in Pegasus' favor, much to the displeasure of the many Powell River fans who once again start their, their chant of disapproval. It's a physical game, but so far quite clean. No major incidents. Boguslawski, free kick for Villa, Powell River Villa. And now you have to carry the ball. Carry it. They've got to pull out the defenders here. Simpson, well defended by Mastro Monaco, cleared by Oliviero. Long ball upfield by Cannon. Looking for Fiorvento. Yes, Fiorvento through. does well to get away from Boguslawski. He's in all alone. Oh. And finally stopped by Cam Climber. <laughs> David Fiorvento had a golden opportunity after beating his man cleanly. I think the goalie's hurt here, though. Climber got the studs. Fiorvento studs right in the head, I think. And he's hurt. Vento went flying in after losing possession of the ball, really. He had uh, beaten his man very cleanly, was in all alone, pushed the ball too far. Climber came out, did well, but Trevento followed through, and uh, luckily Climber isn't badly injured. Yeah, he looks okay. He looks okay, but he seems quite upset with the whole situation, as are most of the Powell River <laughs> spectators and players. I think Dave Fiorvento should have shot a lot er earlier and uh, maybe gotten a rebound out of it. He certainly had the opportunity to do that, but in instead he tried to beat the goalkeeper and push the ball far too far ahead of himself. Free kick for Powell River. And away we go again. Now they're going to try it from the left side. There we go. We've got uh, Oliviero. Pence going after it. Oliviero's got it. Pence took him. Controlled by Paul River. And Lee.
Leach is going to get the ball here. Over to Kent. Defended well by Clark. Lowry to Celebrini. Celebrini over here to... Oh, good tackle. Can Kent get it over here? It's a bit slow. And Celebrini came back well for it. There's a long kick. If you wish to have another beer in the beer garden, please bring back your cups. We're running out of cups. Back to Cook. Over to Simpson. Who hit his own player. Well defended. So we have Tibor. Knocks it up to Fiorvento, who heads it back to Celebrini. Celebrini back to Fiorvento. He's going to take him on. And there's, there's Oliviero. Beautiful ball on the right side. This could be it. Excellent goal right through the net. And Pegasus makes it two to one. A brilliant effort. By Frank Laurie. Wait a second here. Frank Laurie put it through the net. There's a hole in the net, and it went through. 17th minute mark. 17th minute mark. There's no question that was a goal. There's just a big hole in the net, and it's two to one, Pegasus. Paul River fans Pegasus don't like it. But they sure Brilliant effort by. Dave Fiorvento over to Oliviero, and Oliviero saw the open Laurier, and he went in and made no mistake and put it in the back of the net. And now we're going to have a few minutes timeout to repair that net. My goodness. What exciting effort here. Paul River fans don't like it. Nevertheless, it was a brilliant goal. We'll have to see now how Paul River reacts to this, being down for the first time, two to one. Well, the way they've been playing, they can pick up their socks and certainly create more uh, uh, attacks and try to get back into this match. But it certainly has kept Pegasus happy. We even got a happy signal from their coach down there on the bench. But that's the, uh, the quickness of Pegasus on their counter attack. And uh, we're starting again. Now let's see what Paul River can do to counter attack this. I think this is Cook. It's out of touch. And uh, maybe we'll see a long throw here by Lamont. Yes, he's going to come in and try to take a long throw. They should set themselves up a, a little better. Now he should be looking for the flick on here. Defended well by Pegasus. And now Celebrini and Cook go after it. Oh, and it's a free kick. McLean was stripped up there as he beat his player. And now it's a free kick to Pegasus. $200 in the 50 50 pot. To the holder of ticket number 119624 on the pink tickets 119624. Please claim your prize at the press box. There'll be a free kick here, and it looks like there might be a substitution coming in for Paul River. Yes, he is. I think it's Pence coming out. Substitution for Paul River. Entering the field, number three, Sean Louie. And replacing number eight, Cam Miller. Well, it looks like Louie is uh, going in for Cam Miller. Maybe to put a little more uh, spark in the attack for Paul River. We'll see if it pays off for them. 50-50 winner, please come to the press box. Ticket number 119-624. Pink tickets. 
It's kind of quiet in the DePaul River fans here, but uh, well, they're just going to have to pick up their socks and uh, try to get some attack going. <laughs> 64. That's a dead on. Lucky boy. Dead on. <laughs> 230. <laughs> kick here for uh, Paul River as we uh, pick it up again. We're about at the halfway mark now of the second half with the score 2-1 for Pegasus over Paul River on that great shot by Frank Lorre. Here's Cook. Cleared away by Reed. Celebrini scrambles it away. McDougal tries to keep it in play, doesn't succeed. However, he doesn't touch the ball, so it's his throw in to Louie, who has just entered the field in place of Miller. Over to Cook. Long ball upfield. Good battle between Higgs and number 17, Lamont, won by Higgs. He wasn't too happy there. He thought he uh, should have been a free kick for Brad Higgs, but uh, the ref well, Lamont came in really, really hard. Free kick. Laurie, in his attempt to get to the ball, fouls. Louie, free kick for Powell River. Beer drinkers, one more notice for you, beer drinkers. You must stay within the fence area. You do not wander around. The beer garden is in the fence area. Please stay there. Brings the ball upfield to Simpson, over to McLean, Bogoslowski, back to McLean, over to McDougal. Intercepted by Lore. Leach seems to have moved into the center of the park now from his um, right side position. Throw in for Pegasus. Celebrini, Bogoslowski, Louis and Celebrini. Well, Pegasus seem to be content here to just sit back and then just wait for Paul River. If uh, they're going to bring it up, they're going to defend in numbers. And we'll see if that continues. Throw in for Paul River. It looked like a quick one, but... Um, didn't materialize. The throw-in is to be taken by Louis. Over to Leach. Back to Louis. Into the box, looking for Pence. Pence again. Over to Cook. Beaten to the ball by Redmere. Upfield to Fiorvento, who once again is wide open. Fiorvento. Nice ball. Over That's to Celebrini. Good switch by Fiorvento. Celebrini, long, high cross, no one there except for Powell Rivers Cook over to Leach. That's what a good defense by uh, Jeff Clark. Took the ball right away. Clark again from Budai to Fervento. Fervento. 
tries to get around his man unsuccessfully thus far. Still Fiorvento. Cannon comes to help out and wins the throw in. We've now played about 25 minutes of the second half, meaning that we have 20 to go in regulation time, with the score still 2-1 for North Shore Pegasus. Let's see if uh, Pegasus tries a long throw here. No, I think they'll be content with the short one. Budai. Budai. Budai and Leach. Budai wins that battle into the middle. Yep. Oh, Great opportunity. Celebrini just had an open net there. But, but it was offside. Go. The linesman had that flag. Yes. Celebrini was offside. Budai did really, really well. It's a good defensive play by Renier. McLean did well there. exception to that and uh, started a pushing match with Fervento who receives the yellow card from Sakal. Maybe she get the fans out of here. Things are heating up. I think the ref should get the, the uh, spectators away from the bench there. Something's going to happen. Yeah, it looks like the uh, referee is going to uh, clear out the bench there. All the fans are asked to do is sit in the stand. All fans, please sit in the stand. Play suspended here. <laughs> on the bench there. Oh, this could be dangerous here. Throwing things on at each other. Play will resume with a free kick. For Powell River, the referee Sattel wants it retaken. Intercepts. And La 
Lamont gives it back to uh, his keeper. And Cook takes the ball up. He's looking for Pence, but intercepted by Tibor. To, to Jeff Clark, who takes a shot well wide of the net. And that'll be a goal kick for Paul River. Going to try to take these guys on. Here he is. He's inside the 18. Oh, and it's a good save by the keeper. Let's see what Paul River can do if they get the ball. And they do. Lamont over to Louis. It wide, takes a shot on goal, but it's quite weak. <coughs> no problems for Brad Higgs. That was Tony Leach who took that shot, number seven. Pegasus is uh, getting ready to make a substitution, number eight, Ken Adloff, with um, sporting a, a, a cast on his uh, broken left hand, is uh, ready to come on. Normally a defender. Here's Leach. Brought down by Master Monocle. Wins the ball back. Another pushing match between Leach and Master Monocle. Throw in for Pegasus. Here comes the substitution. Adloff going on for Fiorvento. Well, it's also getting a bit heated up there on uh, the field, too. Substitution for Pegasus, number eight. Not Adolf. only in the fence, but he also in the uh, field. As Leach and uh, the Monaco were uh, going after it. Well, I've done it through for Hopefully time. things will settle down and we'll get good soccer. All fans are asked, please sit in the Nice stand. hitch kick by uh, number All 17, Celebrini. All fans are asked, please sit in the stands. It's going to be a throw-in for Paul River. And is there a substitution here? Yeah, substitution coming in now for Paul River. Number eight for Paul River Cameron Miller. Miller's coming back in. Looks like Lamont is hurt. Number 17, Derek Lamont. And it'll be a corner kick now for Paul River. Let's see if they can uh, make something out of this. They're starting to run out of time, Bill, and I think uh, they're going to have to do something very quickly to get back. We have about 10 minutes to go, not counting injury time, of course, which is kept by the referee and only the referee. Corner kick by Paul River from the far left. There's an in-swinger coming in. Yes. Barely over the top. That looked more dangerous than it was. This went over the net. seem to be happy again. Cook gives it to Leach. Leach is man. Leach is fouled by Adloff. Uh -oh. Adloff this, and Leach this, this are getting into good. it. 
may turn ugly here. I think Steve Reed did well. He came in to uh, break that up. And for his trouble, it looks as if uh, Steve Reed might get spoken to, yes. Referee Sotel wants uh, the three combatants. Actually, Reed was not a combatant. He was a peacemaker. He tried to get uh, the two players apart. Sotel has uh, words with all three. And it looks as if... Uh, Someone's going to get a yellow. All three, all three received uh, yellow cards on that occasion. Leach for Paul River and Adloff and Reed for Pegasus. Free kick for Powell River. A lot of paperwork for the referee. He's going to try to keep the, the tempers down or this game's going to get out of control here. Well, more in the stands, I'm, I'm afraid, but on the field. I think the referee has pretty good control of what's happening on the field. Not quite as easy a task to control the many uh, spectators. Long clearance upfield by Oliviero. Brought down by McLean. Back into the mix. High ball, which Brad Higgs has uh, some difficulty in uh, grabbing with uh, Ross Simpson challenging very hard for that high ball. Celebrini gets around two men, finally stopped by play. Cook. This is Clark. Left footed cross in the box. And it's a corner kick. Well, let's see if uh, they're going to orchestrate one of their uh, corner kicks again. <laughs> yes, we have both their big men coming in. Well, Regnier, we got uh, Reed coming in as no, well. No, Reed, Reed uh, has decided not to go. Master Monaco, on the other hand, I think he wants is heading, to, heading upfield into he the box. Wants to make sure that uh, the defense is well covered. No chances here. Swinger. Good save by the goalie. Grabbed by Clymer. Despite Nastro Monaco's a very strong physical challenge. Simpson to Leach looking for Carroll. Cut off by Regnier. Regnier. Regnier keeps it in play. Reed upfield to Oliviero, can't control it. And Cook decides to put it into touch for a throw in. Well, Pegasus won't be in any hurry to take this throw. Oliviero seems to be suffering yes, from... Yes, uh, he's got a cramp. From I think he's uh, dehydrated. And it's taken its toll now. I'm surprised the ref let the trainer on. <coughs> Maybe that's a tactic. I don't know. Maybe a little time. bit of gamesmanship there by Julian Oliviero. With five minutes remaining on the clock. Barring, of course, injury time, which must be at least two to three, three minutes. minutes. Anyways. Yes. A little hesitation there on the part of the two uh, Pegasus defenders. Finally cleared. This is Adloff over to Clark upfield, looking for no one in particular. No, they just want to clear the ball and uh, content to defend in numbers. Lore, the winner, uh, the score, the, the goal scorer of the second goal, which could 
easily be the winning goal. Wagner oh, challenged here. by number eight, Miller. Yeah, foul. Actually, referee Sotel judges that Wagner fouled Miller. From this distance, it looked to be the other way around. Free kick for Paul River. This could be dangerous. Everyone should be going up now. There's, there's no problem. Oh, oh, it's a, uh, it's a penalty kick. Yes, it is. It's a penalty. Juliano Oliviero, who has been what the best break. player on the pitch so far, handled that rather harmless cross on the free kick. This is a big break for Paul River. And Paul River has been given a penalty kick. All happening at the 42nd minute mark. The cross came from the far left from McDougal. This is a bit of pressure for Paul River. And all they have to do is bury this one and we're wow, tied my, two and two. Ending. Number 19, Bogoslowski. He's going to take it. Brad Higgs has got to really dig deep now to save this. He's pacing up and down on the goal line. He's talking to himself. Bogoslowski awaits the whistle. Sotel whistles. There we go. Bogoslowski puts the ball to Higgs right. moments earlier I had said that Frank Laurie had uh, scored what seemed to be the winner. Well, that obviously is... We'll have to erase that one. ...out of the question now. This puts a different perspective into the game. Well taken PK by Bogoslowski, who's a central defender. So often, central defenders do well in penalty kicks. Big for Paul River. This could give the boost to Paul River here that they needed. As they look like they have more jump now. Pegasus can't go back into uh, into their bench because they don't have anybody else to substitute unless they put him uh, Dave Fiorvento back. Defended well by Cook, and he clears it, and it'll be a, a throw-in uh, for Pegasus. Taken by Renier, who sees Oliviero. This could be dangerous here. Oh, it's well defended by Paul River, and we're going to get a... No, it's not. I thought it was uh, going to be a corner kick, but it's a uh, goal kick. Taken quickly, and Cook is away. To Leach. To Cook, to Simpson, to Leach. Oh, and he gets nailed by Adlock. This is getting physical here now. Now Cook is here. going to be a free kick. I really like 
like it when people held thumbs. Instead of criticizing all the bloody time. If you want to help, help. And now Brad Hicks will get a free kick. <laughs> and it's uh, getting a bit heated down there. tackle from behind and referee Bob Sattel gave Randy Celebrini the benefit of the doubt on that one. Cleared away by Pegasus. Looks like Paul River getting stronger as the game goes on. second half, well into injury time, on a blast from just outside the penalty box after receiving a nifty pass from Frank Laurie, and wow. that makes the score 3-2 to two for North Shore Pegasus. What an Pegasus incredible turn of events, and you just felt that Paul River was minute. gaining control of the game, By and all of a sudden, Randy three Sullivan passes, a counter-attack, and Paul three. River is out and out. Paul River two. My goodness, Celebrini has got to be the hero here. That proves to be the winning goal. But don't never know here, you never know. Anything can happen in this game. Time, however, must be up. Sotel has, uh, to my knowledge, not looked at his watch yet, but surely there can't be much more than a few seconds remaining. This is Simpson fighting hard for the ball. Over to Cook, who sends it way, way over top of the net. We reached the 50th minute mark now of the Yeah, we're five minutes into half. injury time. We can state with a certain degree of certainty that um, that'll be the swan song for Paul River's yes. Cinderella story in this provincial cup. What an effort. Brilliant effort by Celebrini. Pegasus are just going to clear the ball. They're just content to get it out of here. And Paul Rivers got to go up. Just bring the ball up. Here's Carroll. That's it. That's it. And that Paul is River the loses. end of the game. 
Fine an reverse. incredible Fine game. effort. Goes for not. As Pegasus wins 3-2. to two. Original Cup champions, North Shore Pegasus. What an incredible game by both and teams. Final score. North Shore Fantastic Pegasus. effort on both sides. Fowler in the line. Boom. Rick Celebrini is the hero of this one, who in injury time just knocked him pretty in the back of the net. What a great game. The fans are appreciated of the game too. Sergeant Simpson, seven. Looks like we're going to be making the presentations here. Both teams gave it their all. A brilliant effort on both clubs. And hope nothing else develops that's nasty. Paul River just played a super game. Nothing to be ashamed of here. They gave it everything they had. And so did Pegasus. And they were, they were just a few seconds short of getting into overtime but it wasn't uh, to be. Let's just wait and see now as the player... I'm the president of BC Soccer, and uh, Mr. Brown are going to present Paul River with the uh, second place uh, uh, medals to the Paul River Villa. John Meacham and uh, Rob Brown are both presenting these medals, and Paul River deserves a great, great hand of applause because they just played everything, gave it their hearts, and they worked very hard, and they just came uh, one goal short moments of this game. It's a brilliant game and uh, both teams should be very proud. It's tough to take uh, second place, however, someone uh, has to walk away with the silverware and someone has to be the bride. And as we see Meacham shaking hands with all of the players and uh, it's a bit disappointing for them but they certainly gave it a good effort. We can see the Pegasus team putting up their sign. And that concludes the medal presentation for the Villa, Fall River Villa team for second place. Well, it was a brilliant effort on their part. And now we're going to present the Province Cup Trophy and the Championship Medals to the North Shore Pegasus. And again, uh, Meacham and uh, Rob Brown are going to make the presentation. We see a happy bunch of players there to receive their award. It's a good effort on all their parts. 
Pegasus had a very lean roster getting into this game as uh, four or five of their players are playing now for the Vancouver 86ers. Now the announcer is making the reading off the players. They have won the uh, Province Cup. The North Shore Pegasus this year. Who played an incredible game and just squeaked a 3 2 victory in the dying moments of this game. Paul River is now leaving. Getting a well-deserved round of applause from all their fans. A 400 of them who came here to cheer their team on. And uh, uh, they just played a brilliant game. Well-deserved effort. And uh, Pegasus now who are jumping up and down and they're receiving their medals. And uh, shortly they'll be giving the award. <laughs> And that concludes the medal and the trophy presentation for this year's Province Cup. Thank you. Fun. I put the league too. <laughs> it's stupid. It's not stupid. You never know, you might get overtime, son. Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, I, I felt money on that.